Welcome to Camo Office Hours. I'm your host, Eden from Camo, my co-host, Loie from Camo, and we are joined today by product specialist, Harmony. I will let you introduce your last name because I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Thank you so much for joining us today. Could you introduce yourself to the audience and maybe say your whole name and so I don't butcher your last name? <laughs> Absolutely, Eden. Thanks so much for having me. Uh, my name is Harmony Jerudek. I'm a customer success manager and product specialist here at Descript. And I've been here a little over two years now. And so it's been an awesome journey seeing the product evolve over the last few years. Still a lot to come. But yeah, so super excited to be chatting with you guys today. Awesome. And for our friends that are joining us live, let us know where you're joining from. And if you have tried Descript, if you've heard of it, Drop any questions that you have for us about Descript in the chat. Um, we'll answer some as we go, and we'll save some towards the end of the show pending time. But this is your best opportunity when, you ha when we have Harmony on with us. Um, so I will be perfectly honest. When I was drafting the promo emails for today's live stream, I had a little bit of difficulty concisely describing what Descript can do, because I feel like it does so much. <laughs> so before we jump into like tutorials, when someone asks you, Harmony, what is Descript? <laughs> How would you answer? So the simple version is that it's a collaborative audio and video editor that works like a Word doc. That's kind of like the one liner. It can go very wide and very deep, too, depending on the type of content you're looking to build. So you know, if you're producing audio only content, you, you can do your process end to end in, in Descript. You, as you've probably seen, we've incorporated a lot of video features over the last couple of years. So if you're doing video podcasts, creating marketing videos, if you're creating training and learning content, like I said, you can go very wide and very deep very quickly and you can keep it as basic as you want or you can get pretty darn advanced. So um, depending on what you're creating, uh, I think Descript can definitely be the tool for you. Yeah, I feel like when I first heard about Descript, it was a little bit more like, um, like it was for like creating subtitles mostly and like removing filler words were like the two major features that I heard of from Descript and like just the easy transcription. And like, so I always associated it very much with podcasting, but like last year I feel like was when you guys released the like storyboard um, and like a bunch of like post editing for like video features that made it like a lot more targeted towards video, which I also feel like makes sense since so many podcasts these days are sort of, you know, not just doing audio only anymore. It's like they're kind of branching out into video. So I just think that's like really cool. Um, what is like some of the coolest or most like unique contents you've seen people like do with Descript? Yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, thinking back to when I first started our the main sort of user base were podcasters because that's where we started. We started as an audio only tool. And so initially I was just amazed at how many people were using Descript to produce their podcasts. Like I think about, you know, some of the shows I listen to and then I see like, oh, you guys use Descript. Um, and and that, that's so awesome. And I'm like on Twitter, I'll see, you know, audiograms. I'm like, that's a Descript audiogram. Um, and I think what's cool is like, you know, people are discovering they can incorporate aspects of video. So even if they are working with something that's audio only, they'll, you know, add layers such as like B-roll or, you know, progress bars, captions, um, waveforms to like enhance th that content. I'm also seeing a lot of really interesting training and learning content. You know, I, I think keeping that kind of work up to date is really challenging. And so using features like Overdub, which is our synthetic voice tool to ensure that content is evergreen and it's up to date and it's compliant. Um, it's, it's kind of a game changing thing to be able to like, you know, pull in a webinar from let's say two years ago and then get it like up to date with, you know, some of, if, if you know, if you're a SaaS product, get it up to date with new UI shots or, or whatever the case may be. Yeah, I feel like um, just on sort of that note, one of the features that I didn't even know, and we're going to be talking about all, all these features a lot more in depth coming up very soon. We're just going to give people a little bit more time to join before we dive into the tutorials. But like, I didn't even know that Descript had like a built in um, like screen share sort of recording feature, um, like similar to Loom. And that makes like, you know, yeah. educational content or like within the team like tutorial content like really easy to do so i feel like um that's like one of my like sort of unsung hero features that like 
like I, I don't think I've heard anyone promote it, but like I definitely use mm. it and like found it one day, I think when I was just clicking around and, and I just thought that was like really cool. I feel like Descript has a little, like a lot of like kind of hidden little features <laughs> that are like just so powerful on their own even. So um, yeah, we'll be, we'll be getting into that. Um, Loie, did you have any questions for, for Harmony about, about content? Yeah, or? yeah. Absolutely. So Harmony, I know that you're the customer success uh, manager when it comes to Descript. So I wanted to know how you tie that role into you know, like what exactly that role means for you inside of Descript. I've seen a lot of stuff from Eden, and I'm just wondering how you kind of tie that in together with Descript and, and what your role looks like exactly. Yeah, I, so I, I'm really lucky in that I get to work with prospective customers, kind of being a, a, a customer advocate, showing them like, hey, here's how the tool works. If it's going to something like podcast movement or you know other other events that we attend, getting people excited, ha helping them have that aha moment of like, hey, look, you can you can accomplish your workflow in Descript, whether it's just creating a video. You know, we would love to see, you know, video being in everyone's communication toolkit. And I think like that's what's so exciting right now about video. Um, but I'm also lucky in that once we onboard new customers, I'll do their initial training. We'll retrain them every every few months or when we have large updates to ensure that they're set up for success in the platform. Because as you know, and as you've probably seen, the platform changes a lot. Um, and, and as Eden mentioned, there's a lot of different features layered into the product. So as you didn't mention, you know, transcription is kind of like that base layer of the cake. From there, you have the recording capabilities, you're, you're editing your audio and video like a doc, you can create scenes, layer in B-roll, images, all of these other assets. Then you can use templates and overdub. So it, it's uh, really helping teams understand like it's not a one size fits all onboarding experience, if that makes sense. Everyone's using the tool in a different way. So no one really gets like the same, you know, like blanketed onboarding. It's going to be really tailored based on the type of content that they're creating and their, their specific workflow and tech stack. Yeah. Um, so we have a friend of the show saying, what does Harmony want to say about, about Camo? Are you using Camo right now by any chance, Harmony? I am using <laughs> I am. I'm using. I'm using it on my iPhone. And first of all, I love it. I don't do any live streams without it. So thank you so much. Um, I, I, I also noticed. I think this was in a recent update. One day, I was just working from my my Logitech webcam, and all of a sudden, I noticed Camo like took over that that webcam. So I was like, yes, it's extended <laughs> beyond my iPhone. This is so, so exciting. <laughs> Yeah, so we updated earlier this year in March to expand to all cameras, any camera you can connect to your phone. Um, just because so many people, we got so many requests for people wanting to add, you know, be able to do portrait mode or do adjustments because a yes. lot of camera software, you know, isn't that robust. So we're really excited that we were able to branch out a little bit. Um, all right, well, I guess now that we've given people some time to join, we can go ahead and jump into the tutorial section. So for this live stream, I really wanted to really like show people what Descript can do and have it be like sort of more of a tutorial and demo instead of like just an interview. So this is also the opportunity. Remember everyone, if you have any specific features that you'd like to see demoed, drop it in the chat and I will be monitoring. There's no better time than now when we have Harmony on with us. So Harmony, whenever you are ready to add your demo screen, I will get that added. All right. Absolutely, got it. Uh, should be good to go now. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> um, so me and Harmony work together to pick out a few features to start with. And the first one is filler word removal, I think. So Absolutely. yeah. So there's all of these really fun AI tools that are built in to help speed up your editing process. And as you're seeing over here on the left, this is where when once you import a video or audio file, Descript's going to automatically transcribe it. And you're going to notice that some of these pesky filler words and repeated words are getting underlined in blue. Um, my amazing colleague and I recorded this in Squadcast. So just take those recordings, bring them in. 
And you'll notice, yeah, since these are underlined in blue, I can come up to this magic menu or star menu. And I'm just going to select remove filler words. And you'll notice that a few things will pop up. Over here on the right, it's going to show you where all of these filler words are. And I've noticed since I've started using this feature how much I say um and uh. But there's <laughs> Same. a ton of other. <laughs> it's, it's, kind of, it's kind of crazy. Uh, but if we use this drop down here, you can kind of pick and choose what filler words you want to get rid of and what you might want to Keep. Oh, that's so cool. I didn't even know that you could like see all of them in a drop down like that. And I use this feature yeah. regularly. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yeah, no, it's it, it's it's pretty great. And especially, you know, for a lot of interviews, you might not want to get rid of all filler words. You know, it, it's nice to keep some to keep, you know, ensure that the the pacing feels organic and kind of natural. Uh, so in a lot of cases, I'll deselect select all. And I might just kind of look through this list and see what my repeat offenders are. So <laughs> I've got the uhs, the ums, the likes, you knows, and I'll do the repeat offenders <laughs> too. Yeah. And, and then from here, now my filtered list has updated based on those selections I've made. From here, I can either choose to fully delete them. And so since I'm working with video content, it's gonna create a tiny little jump cut where, where we make that deletion. I can also choose to ignore it. And this is my personal preference. I like ignoring these because if any in any case where the cut feels a little too abrupt, I might wanna bring that up back. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and apply to all. And now you'll notice that these these repeated words, these ums and uhs are just being left out. So what it'll do is let's take a let's take a quick listen here from about here. I have a dog named Chloe and I have a bird named Luna. The cat lives with my partner's parents actually, so she lives separately. So notice how it just skips right over the the, the filler word that's been ignored. And the, the kind of cool thing is that like once you've gone through and done your initial edit, I, I like using my favorite keyboard shortcut, and I know we're going to talk a little bit more about keyboard sh shortcuts later. Uh, Command or Control K, depending if you're on a Mac or um, Windows machine. And I'm going to ignore, do remove ignored text, and then that's just going to wipe all of your ignored text out. So if I do that, now it's just gotten rid of it from from the transcript. So now the benefit of that is now I can export this. Um, my transcript, so I've got a really super clean transcript, or if I'm going in here and throwing on captions, then it's going to be s super clean and I won't have those those ums and uhs that were previously in my transcript. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's something I definitely didn't know how to do, but that's awesome. And I'm really glad that you brought up the fact that you don't delete all the filler words, because I actually edited a podcast once and this was a, a podcast host that was pretty flagrant with the filler words. And I, I did a lot of editing, maybe over edited it. Well, I did over edit it because I removed almost all of them, except for the ones mm -hmm. where it was like connected directly to like a thought or something. And the host came back and was like, yo, this is too polished. I wanted it to sound like we were just having a conversation instead of um, like a presentation. And I thought that was just really interesting feedback that some people feel like leaving in a few filler words here and there just comes off a little bit more personable. I don't know, what do you guys think about, yeah. about that? Yeah, it's definitely more natural with filler words. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely more natural. I think it, you know, might see, this is what I'm doing, you know. Um, uh, it's a little bit easier to get words um, across when you have time to think, and then obviously uh, filler words sound more natural in that way. But it is good. It is good to take the ums and ums out because I do those most often. And I didn't actually know that you were able to pick and choose from the drop-down box. So that is incredibly helpful. So you're not combing through all the highlighted ones, seeing which one you use the most. And I also love that it comes up on the side to show where exactly they are. And like you said, the repeat offenders. So you can really easily choose which ones you want to get rid of. I think that's super helpful. Exactly. Yeah. And and I, I think like. Once you've kind of made that initial edit, I, I love seeing a clean transcript and clean captions. That's my pet peeve, like especially when I'm even watch some, watching something on TV or even watching a video podcast. When the captions are inaccurate, it, it drives me crazy. So that, that's like 
one of the main reasons that, yeah, I want to like get all, get all of that yeah. cleaned up for that, yeah, that end result. I, I think that I've never put myself outside of actually having to witness that. I think thinking about it now, it's like, of course, of course you want it to be yeah. absolutely aligned and like clean and, and say exactly what the person on the screen is saying. Uh, so I've never, I've never really put myself inside of noticing it, but now I absolutely will and I'll probably <laughs> nitpick it. <laughs> yeah, and let us know in the chat what you guys think about filler words and if you feel like you would wanna take out all of your filler words to come out super polished and presentable, or if you think leaving some in to come off a little bit more organic. All right, so that was our little filler words tutorial. Um, next up is easy repurposing of your longer form videos into shorter clips. Harmony, the floor is yours. <laughs> Absolutely. So this is one of my favorite features of Descript. I think especially if you're working with longer form content, it's, it's so easy to go in and pull out sort of these super special totally. moments or these magic moments that you want, might want to turn into an audiogram or, you know, repurpose for TikTok or your Instagram or w whatever the case may be. So um, I have two sort of tips for you here. One is first using the highlighting tool. So if you highlight a range of text, you're going to get this script toolbar here. There's a bunch of stuff you can do, but one of them is highlighting. So I'm going to highlight this violet. Um, this is a section where Ashley's talking about her, her, her pets. So I'm going to grab that. And then I'm going to also select a little bit down, down at the bottom. I want to select this as well. And I'm going to highlight that purple as well. Once I've made my highlights, I can then go back to the, the star menu here and copy those highlights, do all highlights. And I'm going to come over here to my, my composition menu. Compositions, think of these as uh, Google Docs like or, or blank docs, if you will. Um, so here I've got my master interview that I'm working from. I'm going to create that new composition. I'm going to call this Ashley uh, Select. And I'm just going to do Command V or Control V. And now you're going to notice it's only bringing over just those selects. So now I can pull out th th these specific moments. I might want to just get rid of me since it's Ashley talking here. And I can move her around in the canvas here. I might want to take this and turn it into a square for, let's say, for Instagram. I might want to throw on my, my captions. Oh, that's where the captions are added. Okay, I could never, I, I think that yes, was a missing piece for me was I didn't know. I actually forget that that top menu bar is there, if I'm being honest. <laughs> yeah. I think I usually do there's, right there's click. There's a lot of powerful stuff. Yeah. Yes. So, yes. Oh, you, okay. So yeah, a couple little things up here. So the, te the text icon, that, that'll pull in captions, or if you want to throw on like, text or a title. So if I wanted to put like Ashley's name and title in the top, I could do that. Um, I, there's also uh, shapes. So if you wanted to add in, let's say a progress bar, you can add that in. Oh, very cool. I can, I could go ahead and add like a waveform, move that around. And, and all of these have different settings that you can configure. So if let's say, if I click on the uh, progress bar, I can come over here to the properties panel change the look and feel of these. Let's say I want the the color purple, uh, maybe add like a background color. So you, you can really, you know, make these match your, your branding guidelines to the nth degree. Uh, you can even change the font. Uh, so you can get pretty fancy, like I said, as basic or as advanced as you want to get. Yeah, actually for this, this content repurposing is, I remember Harmony, when you did this demo at Social Media Marketing World, not this last year, but the one before, which I was like, just totally blown away. I was like, I have Descript and I like never knew that it could do all of this. <laughs> um, and recently I was just like trying to add captions and I couldn't find them, but now I know where they are. Um, just go to that T icon, yeah, and just drop them in. Awesome. Something. And Lucas asks, when filler words are removed, does the footage sometimes slash usually slash always looks like it's been cut? Or yeah, what, how would you advise on Great that? Great question. Yeah, good question, Lucas. So, so not always. What, what happens when we make, uh, when we remove those filler words or whenever, let's say you remove uh, a chunk of content out. So let's say you decide, I also wanna get rid of this too. I'll hit delete or strike. 
Um, it's going to optimize the edit boundaries on either side of the edit point. So it's going to be doing a little bit of smoothing. But the, the benefit of if, if you see it, let's let's actually take a listen and see see how this is looking and sounding. The cat lives with my partner's parents, actually. So she lives separately. It's harder than you think to train dogs. Cool. So, so this is where I would probably make the choice to actually come down into the timeline and, and do a little bit of finessing there. Um, generally, folks can do like 80, 90% of their edits in this in the script area, but then my timeline, this is where I might nudge the, the, the side of the edit point. So this is nice that I can peel it back. The cool thing is that Descript's a non-destructive editor. So even when you get rid of stuff, we'll keep it around. So that's we'll, uh, awesome. It's really good. And I can zoom in, I can get really precise here. So I can, there we go, it's a little bit better. And then if if I even want to go to the extent of like adding fades or crossfades, I can do that. So I can get pretty fancy pretty quick. Wait, where where are the transitions? The yeah, yeah. Here, let me I, undo. I, I, so I like down, knew you could get down to the weeds and like, you know, with the with the like timing, but I didn't know you could add transitions. Totally. So so if you hover down here in the timeline, you're gonna notice this little white circle appear. Oh, okay. So if you click on if you click on the circle drag right, drag left, it'll create that, that crossfade. Oh, that's so like cool. So. <laughs> that's yeah. really cool. You're blowing my mind as a Descript baby right now. <laughs> I think it's so interesting <laughs> that you can do like really surface level kind of, well, you know, when it comes down to it, sort of easy edits, and then you can really like dig down deep into crossfades and really just making it exactly how you need it. I think that's so interesting. Absolutely. You, you know, it's funny, like a lot of people, a lot of people prefer to work in the transcript only, but then a lot of people are like, no, I, I like being in the in the timeline. So w this is actually kind of new. We you've got this option to hide. So you can like fully just see the canvas and transcript. So if you're not a timeline person, totally OK, just hide it or you can show it and then you'll be able to see, you know, all of your your layers here. So. I, I like having a nice balance of both. So in this case, I can see my caption layer, my progress bar, waveform. So easy to go into different different layers and manipulate them. Yeah, yeah I, I can definitely. I just oh, love good. that you can adjust it like to see what you want to see. If when you can when you pull the timeline up, you can like see a lot more and get into the weeds. But I just yeah. it's I like how adjustable and customizable like the whole like UI is. Sorry, Loie, go ahead. Uh -huh. No, no, I was going to say I can definitely see use for both cases, whether you want to just stay in the canvas or if you want to show that timeline as well. It's nice to be able to do both. Yeah, definitely. I usually start and, and, with like just the like without the timeline at first. But then when I know I'm going to start editing, that's when I like pull it up mm -hmm. a little higher. Awesome. And, and and actually, this is a good segue. Eden, I, I know I'm jumping over overdub, but um, go ahead. Scene. Yeah, yeah, I would love to talk about scenes real quick. Yeah, sure. So when you add a, a, a scene, so let's say like, uh, you know, I want to change up my visuals. Uh, let's say Ashley's, you know, talking about her dog here. Um, if I add a slash, you're going to notice a new scene card is appearing here on the left in what we call the scene rail. So we like thinking of it almost as like a Google slide presentation. So when and if you want your your visuals to change. It's a way of creating kind of this precise moment, let's say right here. I want, let, let's say to show a picture of Ashley's dog. Um, I can come up, I'm gonna show one other kind of cool thing up here in the stock media library. We've got uh, built-in B-roll, GIFs, images, audio effects, and, and more. So in this case, I might just search for an image of a dog. Oh, so many great options. I'm going to choose this corgi here. We'll bring that in. And now I'll I'll have this new layer, so it'll go from here. My partner's parents, actually, so she lives separately. It's harder than you think to train dogs, I feel like, in the beginning. I love it. So super, super simple helpful. to just add that slash, throw on some new visuals when, if you want to have something change for a very specific moment in time. And then the cool thing, by clicking on the scene card, I can also even add transitions. So I can have this like crossfade or I could do star wipe, you know, whatever kind of transition you're looking for. Um, maybe I'll do like 
Let's do directional wipe. How about that? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> so awesome. it's, it's easy to add those effects on the scene level. Yeah, I, I was did not know that do... those effects were over there. Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna ask if you could do transitions to the to the images or, or things that you put in. Uh, you might have already said this. I'm sorry if I missed it. Can you also do video? Yes, indeed. Yeah. Let's awesome. let's actually. Um, yeah. So what you can do is I'm going to go ahead and right click on this and I can replace mm -hmm. the media and I might want to choose some B roll here instead. Yo, the stock media library is so stacked, yeah, so stacked. It looks great. <laughs> it's pretty, it's, it's a fantastic uh, stock media library. It's uh, story blocks. Um, so just enter in the keyword of the thing that you're looking for and, and most likely it'll, it'll pop up. Um, and so now, since I replace that media, it'll replace here. So as simple as that, just right click cool. uh, on the canvas and then replace media. Awesome. Nice. Yeah, yeah. so w weird. We actually use Descript for our content repurposing. Me and Loi both work on it together. Um, we, we definitely need to level up our clips a little bit. And I think we're both learning a, a lot right now about what Descript can do because <laughs> both of us are kind of babies when it comes to Premiere Pro, which is like what our team uses to edit. Mm -hmm. and, and it's a little bit overwhelming. And now I'm just like, can I do yeah. everything in Descript? Because I think that yeah. would be, that would be awesome. If I think we, we can. I think it's, I think it's showing yeah. we are. <laughs> yeah, so also yeah. while we're here, um, could you also show us how templates work? And then we'll go back to open yes. up because like i feel like we're kind of like in the um in the like editing zone right now so totally um i'm gonna go back to my original edit here so I'm gonna, we've we were just working in this select that i had created um i'm gonna go back to that raw footage here and i'm gonna pull out um i'm gonna just grab this section here i'm gonna use the other a uh, tool that I love using for repurposing content, the duplicate to option. And I'm gonna create a new composition oh, nice. from that. So open that up. And so this is Ashley talking here again. I'm gonna move myself off screen and retitle this. Uh, Ashley, I'm gonna do one. And so templates are a great way of taking something that you're, you know, e either a full episode or uh, so social moments, whatever the case may be. And templates are built in uh, two sections. You've got my templates, which are custom templates that you, you can build. Um, and then you've also got a gallery. These are pre-baked templates that are gonna be here for you. So it's got uh, titles, you've got captions. And once you select one of these, you can fully customize this. So it's, it's nice if you need a little bit of inspiration to get started, if you're not quite sure where to start in terms of building custom uh, templates. I use this one all the time, the, the uh, two-person screen, the multi-cam, um, and then I'll go in and you know make some updates. But I'm gonna go ahead and grab um, this one here, Ashley and Harmony. Cool, and I'm gonna get rid of myself again. And so a couple things over here in the canvas. So it's it's um, brought in my custom captions uh, with specific hex codes that I that I added. It's formatted Ashley's video a little differently. It's added my background color. I'm gonna go ahead and go into my video settings here. I'm gonna set it to a square, and then make make Ashley a little bit bigger here. Move her to the center, and I might want to also. Given that I've already created this template, I might want to build on it. Um, so I, I can go in and add my progress bar, move that up to the top, make it a little skinnier. Cool. So from here, once I've kind of finessed what I want my template to look like, I can right click on my scene card, save to template. And I'm going to add this to my Ashley and Harmony, te Harmony template. And then that's going to open up a new window. It'll allow me to go ahead and make some additional edits. I'll, I'm going to pull that over here. Oh, actually, I'm just sharing one screen. Uh, let me go ahead and reshare. Entire we should screen. like play like uh, waiting room music 
right now. Mm -hmm. I know. <laughs> Bring back the piano. <laughs> yeah. Oh, here we go. There we go. <laughs> cool. So you'll notice I have a new Descript window open now. So here's my original, here's my original template. And I'm going to call this one Ashley. Um, we'll do template. And once, once you've created it, it looks a lot like a project, a standard project, right? So um, this is my first one that I created. Here's my second one. And it says there's some unpublished changes. So I'm going to make sure I'm sharing this with everyone on my drive, or you can keep, keep it private. That's, that's a setting that, you know, for if you're working on a team, you, you can either choose to keep it private for yourself or share it with, with your group. So for, for you and uh, Loi collaborating, I would definitely make sure this is uh, the one selected here and then mm -hmm. publish changes. And then I'll be able to use that template, you know, for other interviews. I can repurpose it later on. Um, and then I'll never have to build that template again. I'll just, just do a one click apply and be done with it. That's, that's super helpful. Yeah, that's so cool. Um, and I'm glad that you brought up the collaboration, like how easy it is to collaborate in, in Descript. Could you tell us a little bit about like, about just like the different ways people can use Descript to work on projects together? Absolutely. Yeah, there's a, there's a couple different things. So for example, if I wanted to invite b both of you to this project, I can come up here to my project access icon and I can just simply invite you, let's say I'll enter in your emails and I can give you either edit or comment only access. So if I'm working with a collaborator where I might not, them to want, might not want them to like mess with the edit, but I, I want their feedback, yeah. I can invite them here via email and say invite to project. Uh, and then I can easily just copy the link to the project, send it to them and they'll be able to open it up on their, on their computer. Once I've added them to the project, I could say like, you know what? right here. I'm going to select this range of text and I use the comment icon and this is super awesome. I'm going to do at symbol Ashley. Should we add B-roll? And then by adding that at symbol, Ashley is going to get notified that she's been mentioned in this project. She can pop in and we can have a full on conversation just like you would in a Google Doc. So it's very collaborative in that sense. Yeah, I was just about to say it just reminds me exactly basically like Google Docs where you can share mm -hmm. with like someone and it's like view only or if you can you let them edit. Also, it's just because we almost all you I don't know anyone that doesn't know how to use Google Docs. So it's just basically <laughs> if you know how to use Google Docs, you can also also, like easily learn how to use Descript to collaborate with people. Mm -hmm. Totally. And, and I think the thing that I'm realizing more and more is that like, you know, it can replace, you know, the, the tools like, you know, Premiere that you mentioned or Loom and even zooming out further, like, you know, thinking about how media is stored, right? Like in that in the drive view, it looks a lot like Google Drive. So all of your content is in one place. You don't have to like upload it to Google Drive or Dropbox. Nice then have like all of the feedback in an email or Google Docs. It's just like all in one place. Yeah. So it's consolidating like many tools to one. That totally like cuts down. I, I swear, I feel like like half of the time that that is spent on like on Google is, is uploading things to Drive, especially because we work so much in video. Yeah. It's like, I mm -hmm. have to sit here and wait for it to upload the Drive. Sometimes it's not ready to share immediately. You gotta wait another hour before it's done processing if it's like HD. So um, that's just totally. so cool that you can kind of like eliminate eliminate that step. Yeah, um, absolutely. And I so, think being able to work all together in one thing instead of like you said, multiple like email, waiting for feedback from somebody, it's, it's super helpful. Yeah. Harmony, yeah. Dean, Dean asks he wants to use Camo on his PC and he wants to record the video using Descript and then do all the editing in Descript. Is this possible? Yeah, so, so uh, recording on, I'm sorry, recording on the phone and then editing everything in Descript. Did I get that right? I think he wants to record like the video using Descript. Ah, cool. Yes, absolutely. Totally possible. Um, so we haven't talked a lot about this yet, but this is, I think, a good opportunity. Um, so when I got started, I just created a new blue blank compos composition here. I pulled in pre-existing audio or video files, but in this case, I could just start recording. And, and from here, I can do a couple different things. I can either record some audio only, I can do a camera recording. So sorry, you're yeah. seeing too busy. <laughs> 
or, or I could do a, a screen recording as well. So if um, you know, you're needing to record a tutorial or um, you know, product overview, this is really, really great. So you could do a camera recording and once you've recorded, you'll be able to edit it down. Um, let me do a little bit of audio real quick, just so you can kind of uh, see an example here. I'm gonna record and cool thing is we now tr transcribe in many different languages. I think it's like 23 languages awesome. now. Um, That's so so cool. I, I'll, I'll leave it on English, but just wanted to call that out. Um, I'm going to record and it'll give me the, the nice thing is that I can turn on a countdown. So I've got that heads up. All right. Uh, Harmony coming to you live from San Diego. It's the most mind blowing podcast you've ever heard. <laughs> okay. uh, we'll stop. And, and since I recorded audio only, um, I could choose to cool. take this and like set this to a composition um, to audio only, but I wanna keep my, my canvas up here cause I'm gonna add some visuals. I'm gonna go ahead and play this real quick. Whoops. Got that heads up. All right, uh, Harmony coming to you live from San Francisco. So same thing, highlight the stuff you wanna get rid of, delete, delete. And maybe here I might want to add a scene where I've got something of San Diego. Oh, this is awesome. Oops, go. Boop, boop. Cool. Add that. Awesome. Add my captions. Harmony coming to you live from San Diego. It's the most mind. So, I mean, it's, it's just like, a way to get started. So even if yeah. like you're not quite sure what you're going to record, just hit that record button, get started, and then you can always edit it like a text doc later. Yeah, I actually, it only just hit me as you were starting to demo it that I was like, oh, you don't even have to actually be on video to like, you could just record a video file and use the stock media library to like fill with, with media if you want. That's like, that's like really, really cool. And I just love it's like immediately the transcript pops up. And that's also just another thing. It's like we talked about it being like text based editing earlier, but I think this is like really showing it's like it really is just like editing the text. You just deleted all the stuff in the front that you didn't need, didn't even have to like go into the timeline where I'm often like, you know, zooming in super, super big to make sure it's like I'm cutting in between words. It's just God, it just makes things so much easier. <laughs> Exactly. Well, and for I think for folks that are also starting out, you know, if you if you're a little camera shy, no sweat, just record some audio first and add in some video layering, like, don't feel the need to like, do it right away. You know, you want to do what's comfortable for you and at your own pace. And so for me personally, I like I would have started audio only and then kind of like, got, you know, weaned myself off and started doing, you know, video later on. But um, totally up to you in terms of your approach. <laughs> yeah, Michael Flynn says, thank you for the demo with the live edits. It's just, I just think that this is why I wanted to do this show sort of like demo style, because I was just like, with Descript, you really just have to see it. Us talking about it doesn't do it justice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, is there anything else on, oh, I did have one question for you that I thought of. So yeah. earlier, I actually, I love that you use the highlight tool to sort of like bring out a, a clip that you wanted to use. Cause I usually, yeah. I actually usually use scenes for that is I go from like a long form like video and I just like break it up into scenes and like copy that Ooh. scene into another composition. But that, that means I'm kind of limited to just that scene that I wanted to pull though. So I'm definitely adding highlight to my, um, to my repertoire because that way when I talk about a topic later on, I can like have it in one clip instead of having to like find the two separate clips and then like putting them together again. So I'm, I'm like, I, I had no that. idea the highlight tool was that like, was, could be used like that. Yeah. So yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> One other thing related to highlights that might be useful for you and Loey too, like one thing I see with teams is that they'll use like the color coding for specific, you know, types of um, like reels that they're creating. So maybe like mm -hmm. Loey has a color that's specifically dedicated to clips that you're pulling. Eden, you use a different color for clips that you're pulling. And then you know, the nice thing is that like once you've, I'll create one more like in a different color 
And then when you go to pull those highlights, you can kind of pick and choose what you want to grab. So okay. if I want to grab just the stuff that Loey highlighted, it can do that, or I could grab, you know, both. So it, it makes it a little bit easier when pulling certain uh, pieces out uh, for repurposing. And one more thing on that note, that little star symbol, I never knew what that was for. I just straight up <laughs> use right click for everything or I go to the menu, but that, that star, that little star menu thing is definitely where it's at. <laughs> I love it's it's that's why I call it my magic menu. <laughs> yeah, Loa, you're taking all the notes too, right? <laughs> yes, absolutely. I'm gonna. I'm actually recording this. I'm gonna be watching it several times. I I I really was like, as base level as you can get. You know, Eden introduced me to Descript a few weeks ago, and she was very much like, "This is gonna be so helpful." For us, I need you to get in it. And I was like, sure, absolutely. And I like, <laughs> I promise you it was, I had no clue that a lot of this stuff even existed. Even though you sent over a huge amount of stuff, I was like, this is amazing, but this is like super helpful. And I was really only like in the, in the little manuscript part, like trying to figure things out. So definitely taking a lot of notes. This is super helpful. Oh, I'm so glad. Yeah, all right, so. We've got, is there anything else on scenes or templates and like editing that you wanted to talk about before we go to overdub? Because I'm like, uh, overdub is like, I'm really excited. <laughs> let's, let's talk about overdub. I'm All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so for folks wondering, what are they talking about? What is this overdub you speak of? Um, it, it's, it's our text to speech tool. So th there's a couple things here. You can create your own synthetic voice with as little as 10 minutes of training. And what that means is we need some audio or video of you speaking plus a consent statement saying, I give permission to create this voice. Um, there's a little bit of setup involved, but once you do that, you'll then be able to generate text to speech using your voice. Or we also have some built in stock voices if you're feeling a little shy and not quite ready to create your, your own. Um, I've got a couple, uh, Eden, I, I, I added um, one of my favorite stock voices here, Henry, but then I've also got it in my voice. All would, right. Would we like to hear it? Yeah. Okay, awesome. So the way that I did this is I went into what we call our write mode. And so what I can do is essentially just type out, um, you know, what, what I want to hear. So um, Eden, where, where are you based again? I'm in Brooklyn. Okay, so I'm gonna, Eden is based in Brooklyn. And so since I already have Henry's voice selected, it's gonna start generating that text to speech. So you're gonna notice it's underlying in blue, show, indicating that it's, it's generating. As soon as it's no longer, um, yep, so it looks like it finished generating here. Cool, let's, I'm gonna take a listen here. Looks like I need to reload real quick. It was just too. It was just too much. It was too, too good for. <laughs> yeah. It's like sometimes it's like there's so much going on that the 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 software is so blown away that it's like I think I just need to reload also. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so let's let's take a listen to Henry real quick. Comes from a podcasting content creation background and loves connecting with people through storytelling and video content. Eden is based in Brooklyn, New York. Eden comes from a pod. Cool. So it's it's as simple as that. Type out what you want to hear. In this case, I I pulled a, a screenshot of Eden, uh, so I layered that into my canvas as well as adding some some captions. Uh, and I also wanted to hear it in, in my voice too. So I, I've got like a couple different options here. I noticed that when when I created my my voice first, it's like a little too fast. So I'm going to show you guys how you can calibrate that. So here's the first iteration of that. Eden comes from a podcasting content creation background and loves connecting with people through storytelling and video content. So it sounds like my voice, but it's like not super natural in terms of what my normal pacing is. So what I did is I took this and I converted it to an audio audio track and I slowed it down. So I slowed it down to 0.8. Oh. Um, so here, now if we listen back, it's gonna be a little bit slower. Eden comes from a podcasting content creation background and loves to connect people through storytelling and video content. Well, so I, I put it at, I'm gonna adjust it to 0.9. So usually somewhere between 0.8 and 0.9 is the sweet spot in terms of like, if you need to slow it down a little bit, that's what I'll do to like get the pacing, um, pacing about right. 
That is so cool. Um, yeah, I like didn't even occur to me that you could like use the speed to kind of make things sound more natural. Um, yeah. yeah, I'm like overdub is is just so cool. Um, how many how how do you like set up an overdub voice though? Like how many hours would I need to put in, or like how many how much time would I would Descript overdub have to like listen and learn my voice and cadence or before it, I'm able to like use it. Great question. So I'm zooming out uh, to our drive view. This is where you have the furthest zoomed out view of Descript. This is where you've got all of your projects and folders. And then I'm going to go into the voices tab. This is where you set up your your overdub voices. Um, I'm going to go oh, into okay. Uh, I'm going to say what you would do is you'd create a voice. So hit that blue button. And that'll open up what looks like a normal Descript project. So I, I uploaded um, like a, a past webinar, um, but you can also just record directly in. So the first step is adding recordings of your speech. And you need a minimum of 10 minutes uh, to create a voice. Oh, that's it? Generally, you'll get, that's it. 10 wow. Minutes. I thought you were going to say like yeah. 10 hours. <laughs> No way, no. And um, the, yeah, so 10 minutes uh, will we'll get you up and running. Um, I generally like to have folks upload closer to like 30, 40 minutes to just have, um, it, it's going to have more training data to work totally. from. And so it's going to sound a little bit more, you know, pro in terms of the overall output. Um, once you've added that, the second piece is uh, a voice ID. So this is ensuring that it is indeed you who is creating the voice. Uh, we don't want people using this tool for nefarious purposes or abusing the tool. So once you add your voice ID through a mixture of AI and human verification, we ensure that these two things match. Once you hit submit, then your your voice will start recording and, or training, wow. and then you'll be able to start using it within about 24 hours or less. Wow. That is I, so cool. Yeah, <laughs> that's amazing. My mind's just like, Overdub is something that I'm like, I know I need to learn how to use it, but that tutorial video on y'all's YouTube page is like an hour long and I just like haven't made my way through it yet. So now I'm like, now I'm like really excited because I feel like you gave us like the cliff notes. Mm -hmm. it, no, yeah, I mean, I, I would say just get in there, create your voice. That's kind of like the biggest um, sort of hurdle to getting started. And then once you do, it's it's really just, you know, go in, select your voice or one of the many stock voices here. And uh, you, you can go through and audition the sound of each of these. Um, so like I said, if you don't wanna create your own custom voice, no pressure, you, we've got some really nice stock voices here for you to play with. Could you could you demo some of the other stock voices that you guys have available? Totally, here's, so we heard Henry, here is Ethan. Life is like a camera, just focus on what's important. Capture the good time. All right, uh, let's hear Ruth. Life is like a camera. Just focus on what's important. Capture the good times, develop from the negative. Uh, here's one of my faves, Don. Life is like a camera. <laughs> Just focus on what's important. I'm a Don fan. And then last one, when it, uh, when it comes to Christmas time or the holidays. Uh, Life is like a camera. Just focus on what's important. I made a few audiograms for my nephews and I customized it like for each of them and it said their name and like asked them like what they wanted for Christmas and they were just like, oh my gosh, what is this? Oh my God. <laughs> <That's> so cool. <laughs> yo, yo, Brusco says perfect. we we need an Ethan Hunt overdub voice. I absolutely agree. Mission Impossible comes out yeah. today. So <laughs> that's, oh, that's right. Oh, super fun. Yeah. Um, so I'm curious, though, are, are Ruth and Ethan, are these people that you guys know? Or did you just like, are these like, people on the team? Or, or how did you guys name these overdub voices? <laughs> Great. So I'm not sure how the names came about, but these are professional voice actors that licensed their voice um, oh, cool. voices that can be used for commercial purposes. So they're not like completely synthetic. They're they're modeled, you know, after human voices. So yeah. Oh, so cool. okay. Wow. I definitely thought that they were completely like synthetically generated. So that's so cool that you guys use like real like samples from like professional voice actors. That's wow. You guys do not cut corners. Yeah. I, I love that. <laughs> no. Yeah. I, I mean, I, and I think like we have a really strong ethics uh, statement and policy around this. You know, there's 
yeah oh there's yeah so much cool there's so much cool stuff happening in the in the world of ai right now in generative media um and i i hope that people use it for for good yeah. you know but then there's obviously the flip side and so um i just think about like all of the wonderful things you know thinking about you know, people that might be having difficulty speaking or, you know, f for accessibility purposes. You yeah. know, so I, I think there's a lot of like really wonderful things that can 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 be done with it with these tools. Yeah, I think a we're like in that intersection of AI where we're it's like there's no guidelines yet, really. And it's like everyone's kind of figuring out where the where the lines are and you know, just like you said, there's people that are always going to any tool that's available. They're going to find ways to abuse it. But like overall, it's just I just think it's it's really cool. Um, it's it's really cool what we're we're able to do with AI. Yeah. Um, wow. Thank you so much for that overdub demo. I cannot wait to go get yeah. our, our voices set up later. Um, <laughs> And I'm trying to be a little bit aware of time. I did want to talk a little bit more about just some more like tips and tricks a little bit. Um, yeah. So like you mentioned a few shortcuts, keyboard shortcuts earlier. Could you just like what you remember? I think it was control K you said. Absolutely. Yeah. Control K that brings up our conductor. And this is this is basically how you boss D script around. So if you're like, I want to oh, add captions. OK, just type in. The thing that you OK, do. there you go. So I just need control K for everything. Basically, I don't need to like sit there exactly. and try to like right click everything and, and search. Shasta Brusco, also a right clicker, my guy. <laughs> yeah, um, cool. No, just yeah. C controller command K. Um, that's my go to. I, th there's a couple other ones like the Z and the X key, your the Z key is going to affect capitalization. Um, so you can right click and hold down the Z key. Um, also, the X is going to affect punctuation. Um, those are like my go to's. And then if you highlight uh, a specific word, let's say um, the transcription is not quite right and it needs needs uh, correcting, you can use that C key correct the spelling, that'll just correct the transcript without affecting the underlying audio and video. So that's my go-to when and if oh, the transcript nice. needs a little bit of cleanup. Yeah, because sometimes I just want to like clean up the transcript for like a subtitle file or something, and and but I want the video to just like stay the same. So um, exactly. Cool. Seeky. <laughs> <laughs> now I know. Um, all right. I also did want to get into some of the new features that I wanted to give you an opportunity to talk about the one that I am like most excited about is definitely eye gaze correction because we get so many people requesting eye gaze correction. Um, like I, you know, I run the customer support team. So we do like feature, we like process feature requests. And when the NVIDIA eye gaze correction came out, everyone was like, when are you guys getting this? When are you guys getting this? And I'm just like, so excited that you guys are, are adding that. What's the timeline for that while I pull up the demo? <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, so we're actually, I'm looking at our help article and we're starting on July 10th. So as of two days ago, um, we're rolling it out gradually to users over the coming days. Um, so the, the, the basic gist of this is that it will, this is AI uh, powered video effect is going to digitally rotate your eyeballs. So I, I have this problem so often, even now when I'm like looking directly at the camera, you look one way or another and you know, you just want it to look perfect. Like you're yeah. looking right into the camera 100% <laughs> of the time. So th th this is a feature I think that's been long awaited. So super excited for, for this feature to roll out. All right, let's check out this demo video. Yeah. Well, oh, I guess I should start it from the beginning. There we go. Recording <laughs> from a script is great because it makes you sound like way more coherent. But the problem is eye contact. If you want to look at the screen, you've either got to memorize your script or get a teleprompter, which is not only a pain, but if you've ever tried it, it's like a whole skill. It's not that easy to do. So surprise, AI to the rescue with this new eye contact effect that like basically rotates your eyeballs in their sockets so they're looking at the screen all the time. It sounds creepy and it is, but you'll be seriously surprised by how well it actually works. So now you can just record yourself reading off of your screen and it looks like you're staring at the camera. But if you turn off the effect, then it, you can see that I'm not actually looking at the camera. And if you turn it back on, it looks like I am off, on, off, on, off. Pretty cool. 
I love the part where he uh, is is like going, you know, off, off, on, off, on. I'm just on. like, wow, that was like my just like so cool. I am really looking forward to that one. Um, so good. So good. Yeah. And, and the cool thing is that it'll work both for stuff that you record directly into the script. But then if you've already had if you have pre, pre existing content, too. Yes, I'm Ron Burgundy. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can upload pre-existing content and fix eye gaze uh, in that way too. Yeah, I thought I actually, so I always tune into your uh, season announcements and that was I, that was actually my question that got picked um, yeah. when I, I was like, oh, does it only work if you're recording in Descript or if it also works in post? And I just think it's, it's so cool that you're gonna be able to fix your eye gaze, whether it's in post or, or, um, or live. Um, yeah. All right, so we had a question earlier also that I wanted to get to was, is Descript available to work with iPads at this time? Yeah, so we're we're not, uh, it, it is an app that you do have to download locally to your Windows or Mac machine. Um, so we don't have an app for the phone or the iPad yet, but, um, one of the things that we are also rolling out this month is Descript for web. So you'll be able to open it up in your browser. Um, so literally open up a Chrome tab uh, and you'll be able to load a project. The one limitation right now is that you're not going to be able to record, but it looks like Eden's gonna pull up yeah. a, a quick Here's demo. Here's the little too. demo video if it wants to load. Um, get it to... Sorry, my Chrome is... Why is there no I want to talk oh, about new platforms right. or a new platform, the web. That's right. We finally made it possible to use Descript in your web browser. That also means that Chromebook and Linus users get to use Descript now too. We're really excited about this and it's something that we've been working toward for a long time. Even if you're perfectly happy with the app version of Descript, it's going to make collaboration so much easier because your collaborators no longer need an app to play, comment, or edit a Descript project. This also ties into our quality goals. Believe it or not, the performance characteristics of our new state-of-the-art web technology are better than the desktop version. All right, thanks, Andrew. Um, back to us. <laughs> <laughs> this is so great. We have our CEO with us live. Yeah, special guest. <laughs> yeah, I just think it's cool because, you know, I mean, I'm a app person, but I just know a lot of people like to, actually, I know some people that don't like to download things. Like they would rather have things just to be able to, <laughs> oh, I see Lowy raising your hand, so. <laughs> yeah, or if you're not on your home computer that you can still like, you know, use someone else's computer to like log in and, and still be able to like use all the powerful tools. That's, that's really exciting. 100%, yeah, even at my last job, like, employees weren't allowed to download apps. We had to go through yeah. IT and it was like crazy long process. Um, so it kind of removes that added friction, even if it's just like, hey, I just want Eden to come in and like add filler, you know, remove filler words, uh, add some captions, drop in some comments, and you don't have to go through that, that process of using the app. Totally. All right. And I know that we have just one minute left, but I wanted to take one last second to we've been sort of doing answers, question answers as we go. Um, and I think we have gotten to all of them. Last call for questions. If you have any, get them in right now. We can maybe do one more. But um, I know that you guys are headed to podcast movement coming up. When is that? Yes, yes, indeed. Super excited to, to go. I personally will not be there, which I'm very sad about. Oh. But my amazing colleagues, Christiana Cromer, who's our community manager, Kevin O'Connell, product education manager, they'll be there. We're going to have a big booth um, and super excited for, for, for the team to be there. We'll be doing demos and I, th I think we're actually speaking on a couple tracks as well. So it's it's going to be a great time. Can you can you give give us a little like preview as to like what the sessions that you guys will be talking about are? Well, obviously a lot of video podcasting uh, re related stuff. Um, I think we'll probably you know be talking about some of these very features that we've covered today. Think, thinking about like templates, especially for marketing teams that are using Descript. You know, there's I think like with how you know video podcasting is becoming more prominent, like there's more distribution opportunities, you're reaching a wider audience yeah. and it's more conducive for advertising too. So it's just like, 
I think this is just such an exciting time for for teams that are starting to like dip their foot into to video podcasting. Well, YouTube now has podcast tab. So yeah. I just like when YouTube finally added that podcast tab feature, I was just like, yo, it is like this just opens up a whole new, new world for like, even if you weren't on video before, like there's like no reason not to like also do video now. I mean, you can also just upload your audio only podcast onto YouTube with like a, you know, still screen or even like audiograms or something. But like, um, yeah. I just think that, you know, YouTube has become such a it's a search engine. It's not just a video platform anymore that like just when YouTube recognized podcasts, it just like really opened up a whole nother world of opportunity, especially when it comes to marketing and, and growth. So yeah, we just, yeah, hundred percent. All right. Well, I think that brings us to about the end of our show. Harmony, any last thoughts that you want to share? Loie, any last thoughts? No, I'm just so, uh, I'm actually excited to start the voice dub, overdub. I really want to get my voice in there and see everything that we can do with that. But no, Harmony, thank you so much for joining us and for, you know, doing that really in-depth tutorial yeah. on how to use Descript. It's super, super helpful. I'm really excited. It gives, it's given me like energy to go back and be like, what can I do with this? So I'm like I'm excited very about like yeah. getting back in there. Yeah, Loie, I'm excited to like start like collaborating directly in Descript instead of like uploading <laughs> files and sending them to each other. So yeah. amazing. Well, yeah, thank you so much for having me today and great questions in the chat. So for anyone that still has questions, please reach out to me. I'm just harmony at Descript.com. Happy to answer any and all of your questions. <laughs> yeah, and I will link, well, the YouTube is actually, I love that YouTube allows you to link um, link other YouTube channels right in the title. So Descript's channel is linked in the title of this live stream. I'll be like adding a few of our, like I'll probably add a few like videos like that go over Overdub and some of the other features that we covered in the description when for the for the replay. So yeah, thank you so much, Harmony. This I, I'm excited to catch the replay myself because you know I'm, a, I'm producing and trying to pay attention, but I'm just like, wow, I think this is like really gonna like change our whole like, uh, our, our video editing workflow and I'm really excited. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so okay. thank you awesome. so much. All right, Great thanks time. everyone for joining today.